I am doubling down on my thoughts about the UCLA football program after they've hired Deshaun Foster. So he is a UCLA guy through and through. Tell me this. Did you need a UCLA guy or did you need a big time football coach? I was not joking. I am not joking when I say that UCLA, if they were as committed as other programs have been and wanted to show that they were willing to make the investments to be a top tier football program, no matter what conference they're in, Urban Meyer would have been the selection. Maybe Urban Meyer is not open to coaching right now. I don't get that sense because after the Jacksonville Jaguars disaster in the NFL, which has no bearing on him as a college coach, by the way, the documentary Swamp Kings came out. It's a great watch. Great, great watch on Netflix. Who do you think was one of the people saying, hey, let's put this documentary out now, Urban Meyer? Because what did it remind everybody? Hey, Urban Meyer's won national championships in this sport. Hey, Urban Meyer's been a really, really successful college coach everywhere that he has been. And he's not a head coach right now. He's sitting behind a desk. Does he want to stay there? Does he want to come back to college football? I haven't talked to him. I don't have those answers. But this move to hire Deshaun Foster, who by all accounts is well-liked by the players, a really upstanding guy, had a successful career as a Bruin. He's a UCLA guy. This move demonstrates exactly what I was talking about with the Bruins. They do not have an institutional investment in being a highly successful football program. Because you're bringing in a guy who has been a coach since 2013 at the collegiate rank. So he's a college football guy. And as I said, he's a UCLA guy. He started there as a GA. He was then a quality control coach and recruiting analyst person. Then he was, for one season, he was not on UCLA's campus as a coach. He was the running backs coach at Texas Tech, and then he got an offer to come back, and he did. He's been there ever since. He was about to go to the NFL. He'd accepted that job. Isn't it crazy how many times this is happening? Ryan Grubb was going to be the OC at Bama? Nope. Bill O'Brien, OC at Ohio State? Nope. Now now, now you've got Deshaun Foster, running backs coach with the Raiders? Nope. Didn't didn't happen. They they retracted it. Everyone's just a retractor. Just, "Eh, yeah, no, not going to do that. So all these guys go to these places. Step in the building. I I wonder if they got any polos from their time there or a commemorative plaque of their time in that particular coaching role. Anyway, Deshaun Foster has never been a head coach before. That's not inherently a bad thing. Arizona State hired a guy who'd never been a head coach before in Kenny Dillingham. I think he's going to do well. Speaking of fan duel bets that I absolutely love, Arizona State over four and a half. Give me that every day of the week. So I don't think that's the problem. Deshaun Foster, though, has never been a coordinator. Now, he knows UCLA. He's a UCLA guy. His passion for UCLA is unquestioned. And that's why this move was made. Because Chip Kelly just wanted to coach football and didn't care about the UCLA brand. He didn't care about recruiting. Didn't want to do NIL in the portal. I'm sure Deshaun Foster will represent UCLA in a way that is honorable and passionate and driven to make the roster the best it can be. But what about someone who's never been a coordinator before screams home run hire? No, to me that screams safe hire. Because you hired someone who's never been a coordinator before. What does that mean? He's cheap. That is not the most expensive coach you could have gone out and hired. Maybe P.J. Fleck took his name out of the running. Bruce Feldman reported that, and he decided he wasn't interested there. Yeah, Chip Kelly left you in a rather difficult situation here in many ways. But UCLA had reportedly wanted to move on from him. Then they were going to keep him. Chip decides he wants to leave. I imagine there was a mutual aspect of that parting of ways. But UCLA, you know what Urban Meyer would have been? Urban Meyer would have been to UCLA what Deion Sanders is to Colorado. You don't have to win right away. But guess what? You hire somebody with that sort of name brand pedigree and you are telling the entire world, we care. Because right now, everything with UCLA is we don't care. Investment in the program, not consistently there. Willing to pony up money to keep quality coaches or higher quality coaches? Nope, 0 for 2 in this offseason. 
DeAnton Lynn, swiped away by USC. Stud defensive coordinator. I hope they at least gave him a phone call to come back because that's how this works. You go take a coordinator spot. Nope, head coaching opportunity. I hope they at least gave him a call, but he probably would have demanded more than Foster would have because he'd been a defensive coordinator before. So Foster's the least experienced, least expensive option. I don't doubt his passion. I don't doubt his character. But I'm looking at his track record, track record and saying, wait a minute, how is this the best option? Was this the best candidate available? Was this the be- this, this feels to me, if anything, like a stopgap move. This feels like a move you make because he's going to pour his heart and soul into it, try and demonstrate that there can be more passion around the program than has been demonstrated at times over the last several years while Chip Kelly was at the helm and try to build up maybe a little bit more of a recruiting base or a brand or an identity for the program. And in two years when someone becomes available, then you go and try and hire him. Like Jonathan Smith at Michigan State, for instance, has got ties out west that don't just extend to Corvallis, Oregon. They go beyond that. Maybe you wait for his buyout to come down after two years. He turns things around at Michigan State and you go off him. Maybe, maybe this is a long-term play. But nothing about this move says all in. Nothing about this move says we're going to turn things around and become a contender with this program. I, I faded UCLA last year. They were one of my favorite bets on then locked on Pac-12, RIP, UCLA under eight and a half. They had the talent to be better than that. They were in a transition year at quarterback. But this move to me, this is their schedule. Their their win total is five and a half. And the players expressed their support and everything like that. I got to be honest, that means very little to me. Not nothing. When, When you've got guys like Ethan Garbers coming out saying, we're excited this guy, maybe he'll be to motivate everybody. But what is he going to acquire in the talent department? UCLA hasn't been recruiting well. He's been on staff. I get that he's passionate about UCLA, but how is he going to change the recruiting footprint? How is he going to attract big-time transfers? When I said Deshaun Foster is UCLA's head coach, how many of you asked yourself, who's that? Guess what? I did too when I saw that was the hire. It's not a big, splashy hire, and it's a program that is trending down. They're set up for a really bad season. And I think they could struggle. Here's their schedule. They start at Hawaii. Don't sleep on the Rainbow Warriors when you're making that trip. Tommy Chang, man. Okay. Guy guy can score some points. But I suspect they'll be able to win that game. They come home against Indiana. New head coach there in Bloomington. I don't know how to feel about that game. I I look at UCLA's schedule. I legitimately see one game where I feel very confident they'll win. And that's Hawaii. They end the year at home against USC and Fresno State. They're losing at least one of those games. They could lose both. But their schedule starts Hawaii on the road, Indiana at LSU. Yeah, Death Valley. Good luck. That's an L. Oregon at home. Not going to have the talent to match up. At Penn State. That's a loss. We're we're at least... The best case scenario for UCLA to start in this season is two and three. And I think one and four is right there on the table. The next week, they come home against Minnesota. To coach against a guy that I would have liked. I I would have liked for UCLA to have hired P.J. Fleck. Then they go at Rutgers, at Nebraska. They're not winning at Nebraska. No way. I like the Cornhuskers here. At Rutgers, Greg Schiano against Deshaun Foster. One guy's been a head coach for a couple hundred games in his career. One guy's been a head coach or a coordinator for zero. At the very least, that's a coaching mismatch. We'll see about the roster. They come back home against Iowa. Never easy to score points. They go at Washington. That's going to be a loss. USC and Fresno, they're losing at least one of those games. I can look at at about half their schedule and say they're not winning that game. There's there's not just a talent deficit. There is a coaching deficit as well because he's going to be learning on the job. Five and a half win total, I'm I'm, I'm under on UCLA right there. I think this is a four-win team maximum in 2024. And I I have serious questions about what they are doing with the football program. And if you're a Bruins fan, if you're excited about it, great. Good for you. 
I am down on this hire. I am very high, though, on two particular transfers that we got to talk about. You know why? Because it's Transfer Tuesday. That's what we do around here. 